Hey guys and welcome to another Wargaming Terrain tutorial. Uh, this week's video we're actually going to go through the process I use to make this homemade static grass applicator. Now this is a really simple build, uh, it cost me about $13 in materials and about half an hour of my time. Uh, this is not an original idea so there are some other videos on YouTube about building this one. I was quite skeptical about whether or not this would work but uh, I can't afford a new static grass applicator so uh, I thought I'd be worth giving this one a bit of a crack and seeing how it went. Uh, at the end of the video I'm going to show you a bit of a side by side of uh, how this lays the grass down versus uh, not using it so uh, hopefully you'll be able to see how effective this is uh, towards the end of the video there so uh, let's get stuck into it and I'll show you how I put it together. Alright, so the main component for this will be this mosquito zapper. Uh, as you can see here, it's suitable for living, travelling and outdoor activity for killing small insects, which sounds delightful. Uh, and I've spared no expense, as you can see there, it is super quality. Super quality. Anyway, uh, this one cost me about $10 Australian. I found it in the cheap shop. Uh, it takes a couple of AA batteries uh, and really easy to pull apart. So you can see there I've got myself also some strainers. I also found these at the cheap shop, a uh, set of three, I think it was about three dollars. Uh, so total cost for this build was I think thirteen dollars all up. Uh, and we'll start pulling this apart and I'll show you how we can get this static grass applicator built. Uh, so obviously first thing you're going to do is just take out all the screws. Uh, this was really simple, there's about five screws in the handle. Uh, once you get them undone, uh, it pulls apart really easily. Uh, just keep in mind there is a little red button uh, that will fall out of the handle once you pull it apart. So make sure you don't lose that. Uh, we will put that back in towards the end once we put it all back together. Uh, that'll be our on off switch essentially. Uh, here I'm just pulling the racket apart just so I can get these wires. I didn't want to trim them off too short. You could certainly cut them off there at the uh, at the base of the racket, but uh, I wanted to try and keep these a little bit longer. Uh, it works out really well in the end when you see me put the strainer into the handle. Uh, now if you're looking for a more, uh, probably a more effective or more technical build of this, uh, Luke Towand has a great video on how he scratch built one uh, using uh, the proper components for this sort of thing so uh, definitely check out his channel and uh, you'll see how he puts that together with um, actually specially bought um, components for for this rather than a $10 mosquito racket. Uh, here I'm just uh, taking the meshes off and removing the wires uh, again this is really simple just a couple of a little pair of cutters will get that uh, get that free. Uh, you'll see there's three wires uh, inside the handle here uh, we're actually going to only need two of them, so in a minute I'm going to cut uh, a little bit down the track. I'm actually going to cut one of those wires out altogether. So we've just got basically a positive and a negative. Now here I'm just getting my kitchen strainer and just uh, doing a bit of a quick dry fit of this one to make sure that it's going to sit in that handle okay. Uh, just have a play around when you're doing this because uh, you do want this to be uh, sort of semi-sturdy in there. You don't want it to be rattling around too much. So you might need to you know, try some hot glue or something like that. Uh, you'll see a little bit later in the, in the video for mine, I actually use some um, heat shrink uh, across this, uh, across the handle there to hold it into the um, into the base nice and sturdy. Uh, you don't need to do that, like I said, you might find electrical tape will do the trick here. So just use what you've got on hand and you'll find that this will go together nicely. So here I'm just uh, making sure that the handle is going to go back together uh, without too many problems and it seems to be okay. It's a little bit rattly in there, but like I said, I sort of solved that problem with the heat shrinking. Uh, here I'm just gonna remove that third wire. Like I said, it's uh, it's unnecessary. It's just for the extra mesh that's uh, in the racket at the beginning. Uh, I've got myself a little alligator clip cable, which I found in my uh, bits box. I'm gonna use that uh, as my uh, negative, uh, and I'm looking at just soldering on this uh, positive wire onto the base of the mesh. So. I'm just going to strip these wires here, just expose them a little bit so that uh, I can do that soldering. And I'm going to also strip the negative here so that I can attach my alligator clip wire on and give it a little bit more length uh, so that I can uh, reach the models a lot easier. So just going to measure that up. Uh, now I will just say to you guys, uh, if you're doing this and when you do put it together, just be very careful. Uh, I'm certainly no electrician or electrical engineer, so I'm not an expert on doing this uh, sort of stuff. Uh, I did follow some things on YouTube to see how it went and uh, this seemed to work out okay. So here you can see I've soldered and sh uh, shrink wrapped the um, 
solder there for the negative and I've also put that shrink wrapping around the handle just to hold it into the base uh, of of the um, applicator a little bit better so it's in there nice and sturdy now I've also fed the positive wire up through that uh, blue shrink wrap and soldered it to the bottom of the mesh so uh, when I turn this over you'll see the solder is there uh, attached more to the netting um, rather than to the side of that I don't know if it really makes a difference I just figured for the sake of uh, not having to pull it apart and redo it I'd attach it to the mesh itself so uh, I've just put the uh, power button back onto that one. Now this is just, it only works when you're holding that button in. And it can make it a little bit little bit tricky to use at times if, you're, uh, if you forget about that button. So uh, just make sure you've got it in there and make sure it is still working. Uh, you can see that solder of the positive wire on the bottom of the mesh there. And this is about ready to go. So I'm just going to load it up with a couple of batteries and I'll show you here this thing in action. So. Uh, I've got, just got three little drops of PVA glue. The one on the right here I'm using, no power or anything, just uh, straight, out, straight through the mesh. Um, now this static grass I've got is really short, so it's probably not the best for this, uh, this type of application, but um, you can see there nothing really happens. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty ordinary. Uh, now I've attached the power and I'm a, having a crack at this second uh, drip of PVA glue and straight away you can see the static grass there is starting to stand up on it and it's giving me the effect that I'm looking for so uh, I'm probably going to have to play around with um, PVA glue here just to get it uh, the way I want it. It seems to be working pretty well but like I said I think this static grass is really just a bit too short uh, and I'll get myself some more soon and be able to get uh, hopefully a lot better results but you can see here compared to that stack on the right um, we're getting exactly what we're looking for which is this grass standing up on end so uh, I'm really happy with this I was really skeptical at the start but as you can see it's working a treat so I'm definitely going to be using this in the future all right, so there you have it guys. Uh, that's our homemade static grass applicator. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like and subscribe if you did. Uh, appreciate everyone that subscribed so far or watched any of my videos. Uh, that's been great. Uh, I have set up a Patreon as well now. Uh, it's not a lot on there, honestly. It's uh, just some ramblings from myself on some of my builds and some of how I go about finding those builds. Uh, but if you are looking to support the channel in another way, please jump on over to Patreon. I'll put a link down below. And uh, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about this build or any of the things that I've done so far, please just leave a comment below and I'll get straight back to you. Thanks very much, guys. See you next time.